Hey there, welcome back to our channel. In this brand new series of videos, we will attempt to, attempt to, no, we will definitely understand the nuances of the Designs Act in the most simplistic manner. As you go through the videos in this series, you will get a lot of clarity with regards to what are eligible for design registrations, who can file design registrations, what are the procedures, requirements and timelines as you go about registering your designs at the patent office, what are the ways to overcome infringements, what are the ways of handling infringements, uh, what are the ways of maintaining design once you have registered them successfully? Before we get into the details, in this introductory sessions, uh, I will try to touch upon a few basic concepts without sections and rules, uh, try to compare them with Patents Act, uh, try to find out if there are any similarities or differences uh, in terms of how an application goes through the patent life cycle and an application goes through a design registration life cycle. We will try to learn from both the acts at the same time. But before we go about this, I will take you through few images of our daily use objects that I have identified. I would uh, request you to pause the videos for a few seconds as we go through the images to appreciate various aspects of the products. Uh, it could be how it looks, uh, it could be what are the function elements that you can identify in the images. So let's get into it. So here we go. This is our first product, a bottle. Now, as you go through the images, you will realize that there is a definite pattern being drawn over the body of the bottle. There are words mentioned such as insulation and spill proof, which suggest that the cap is designed in a manner that it can avoid any spill and there is some internal mechanism which can keep the temperature of the liquid at a definite range, hot to hot, cold to cold. So what do you think? What all features have we identified here? There are some features which are only appealing to our eyes and there are some features which have definite functionality to them. So this is where the concept of design versus patent comes in. Anything which is only for aesthetic nature goes for design registration. However, anything which has a definite functionality to it will go for patents. We don't forget that such design aspects or such technical aspects have to be novel, shouldn't have been disclosed anywhere before the filing date or shouldn't be obvious in light of what is already available out there, be it design or be it the functional element. Some clarity? Can we move to the next product? So here comes our next product, a lamp. Now what we discussed with regards to bottle, try to apply the same logic here. Take a pause if you want. I'll keep going. So there is a definite pattern which is there on the body of the lamp. I can also see that there are some mechanism available to the lamp which can make it adjust its height or direction of light. We can divide or categorize these aspects that we have identified as design, aesthetics or functional elements. So what goes as design registration? Aesthetics. And what goes as uh, patent registration or patent application? The height adjustment, the direction adjustment, the entire system as such, right? will go towards the patent application. Moving on to the next one, a simple chair. Now you may think, what is innovative about it? Don't think from 2024 point of view. Think from way, way back when chairs were not invented, maybe, right? So here, uh, the image is self-explanatory, in fact. There is definitely design angle to it. The, the cushion or maybe the back support that is there has some design angle to it. Uh, there is color, there is line, there is combination of these two, which is appealing to our eyes, which is aesthetic in nature. So it goes to design registration. And let's say uh, the chair was made in an era where there were no chairs. So maybe we can go for patent registration also to claim the structure, basically the legs, the back support and the seat. Uh, I hope there is no question around it. Moving to the best of the lot. Logo gives it out. We are talking about an iPhone here without calling it an iPhone, let's say. So as soon as we talk about a phone, we know that there are a lot many functional elements to the phone itself. There are chips into it. Uh, there are voice recorders. There are video players. There's a lot many engineering equipments inside the phone, which are definitely going for patent rights. But what about the aesthetic aspects? So taking the example of iPhone, Apple actually had 
gone for registering the shape of their phone the rectangle shape that they had come up with and the curved edges that had actually gone for design registration another example was the placement of home button at the front that was also part of design registration and uh, from the figure we can we can analyze that the way the four cameras the lenses are placed at the back the way they are arranged together could also be eligible for design registration of course uh, taking into consideration various aspects of it should not be obvious it should not have been published or uh, it it should not have been available to public by some other provider or by other means right so with with these four examples i hope there is some clarity with regards to what goes for design registration and what goes for patent rights now is it a good time to actually define what is design right so what is design so as per section 2d sorry i promised i will not be using any section numbers but then i thought i'll sprinkle a few so that it remains with you so as per section 2d features of shape we saw shape and features in our previous examples configurations how they are configured patterns ornament or composition of lines or colors or combination of these so we saw the chair example composition of lines and colors right configuration with respect to the iphone that we saw features of shape iphone or the lamp that we saw and the bottle that we saw right all these designs when they are applied to an article whether in 2d or 3d are eligible for design registration of course they have to be novel they have to be non obvious and they have not been disclosed to public without before the priority date or filing date of the design registration so remember just a design is not eligible for design registration design applied to an article is design registration we will talk about how do we choose article there are classifications that have been defined but then let's keep it for the other set of videos and how do we judge it we judge it through our eyes how do we look it basically love at first sight and uh, what else the first impression right those are the design aspects of any article that you see so what is not considered as design then so it doesn't include the way the design is constructed basically is it constructed manually or mechanically or chemically or with combination of all these we don't care what is the final design and to what article is it being applied to is what we care about and having a trademark on any design doesn't mean it's a new design so trademarks on design registrations are not accepted or are not considered as design elements similarly as we discussed in our earlier examples functionality of the device or the article that we are talking about is not considered or evaluated while evaluating design of an article or design which is applied to an article so with this i hope there is some clarity with regards to what is design and what can be applied as design registration or what can be applied for design registration let's move on to understand the life cycle of design registration you know what as i keep saying to most of you don't worry too much about design registration because it follows the same process in a broad manner as a patent application follows now why would i say so i say so because the first step of course is filing of the application what forms do we use we use form 1 as per section 5 or section 44 sorry for uh, talking about sections but let's talk about it you know why not so who can file it we will discuss it later but as per section 5 uh, if your design is original has not been published to the public domain before filing date or is not obvious with regards to existing design or combination of designs then of course you can go ahead and file for a registration of your design using form 1 uh, you can directly file with the indian patent office as your first filing or you could take a priority from convention countries similar to patents isn't it now because we are talking about patents what will be the second step examinations so patent office or the controller assigns an examiner to examine your application your application is examined with regards to the three things that we talked about original not disclosed to public and non obvious and any other uh, lawful ground that could be placed to object the application or registration of your design uh, you respond to the objections raised by the examiner similar to what we do during patent uh, arguments right 
uh, you can request for hearing also to put your point across. So based on the examination and the response that you file, controller can either accept your application or refuse your application. If the application gets refused, you can appeal to the high court. So controllers decisions are appealable in design act also going to the next stage. So once it is accepted, of course, it gets published. So here is where it's, it differs from our patent act. Not every design registration application gets published. It gets published only once the design is accepted, accepted in the sense it has been registered. All the arguments have been overcome. All the objections have been overcome basically. Uh, for how long is the registration valid for 10 years? Can it be extended? Of course, it can be extended by another five years. Remember in the life cycle of patent, we have uh, oppositions also. So in design act also, we have a position. Here we only have post grant opposition. And what do we call it? We call it a petition to cancel the registration, cancellation petition. Who can file it? Any person interested can file it. What form do they use? Form 8 is the form that any person interested can use to request cancellation of a registration. Does it get cancelled without any arguments? No. Just like the patents, here also we have inter-party arguments and hearings before the controller deciding what to do about the cancellation petition that has come. Uh, based on what kind of arguments were made and how solid the arguments were, the registration may stay or can be cancelled. Uh, remember we talked about can we extend the registration validity? Yes. The applicant can request for extension by five years. Now this extension has to be requested before the expiry of the first term, which is 10 years. Uh, what form do we use? Form 3. So form 1 is for filing, form 3 is for request for extension. What happens when we forget to extend or we don't want to extend? Obviously, the rights will get lapsed. So when the rights get lapsed, so basically there is no design registration available anymore. It means it is free for others. Anybody can use that design and put on their articles. But what if you would want to restore or what if you would want to renew the lapsed design registration again? Of course, you can do that. How do you do that? Remember in patents, restoration application. Here also restoration application can be filed using form 4. Here also you have to justify that failure to pay the renewal fee was not intentional or there was no undue delay in making this restoration application to the controller. Form 4. So these are the main forms that you need to remember. Form 1 for application filing, section 5 and 44. Form 3 for extension request, section 11. And if your application needs to be restored because you didn't pay the renewal fee on time, form 4, it, it is covered under section 12, 13 and 14. We will talk about all this in detail in the subsequent videos. So tell me, isn't this life cycle similar to what we have witnessed uh, during our uh, patent application process? So I hope this gives you an overall picture about the process that is followed for registering a design, uh, what aspects of an article are eligible for design protection vis-a-vis -vis patent protection, uh, what are the similarities and dissimilarities between the patent life cycle and the uh, design life cycle. So are we ready to move to the next set of videos? Not so soon. Let's go through a case law, a recent case law, which will give you a lot more clarity with regards to how they are evaluated. So this case study is related to Pedilite and Astral and their containers. So tell me one thing, would you get confused between these two products? If you were to go to buy Pedilite's MCL, would you end up buying Solvo Bond of Astral? So that was the case. Pedilite was not happy about Astral copying their container design. So what do you think? What would be your judgment? Do you want to take a pause and provide your observations? Take your time. So when you look at the Pedilite container, there are definite design aspects to it. It has a distinctive shape and configuration. Now, what is that? If you look at the cap and overall top and bottom part of it, there are vertical lines and elongated ridge around the cap, which is connecting to the seal at the container. 
and there are also edges around the shoulder and bottom of the container. That's what PD Light had to say to the court. Court also looked through the Astral's container and came up with this conclusion that there is a definite overall visual impression that you can get by looking at Astral's container. They seem to near identical design, overall visual impression that you can get by looking at Astral's container. And Astral was of the opinion that if you look at the parts of the design, basically mosaicing of the mosaicing of the design in the sense combining multiple small design aspects and saying that this is a new one. So even though there are different elements, design elements in the container, we cannot take that as an argument to say that my design is different from that. So we don't apply the logic of mosaicing the designs while comparing two designs. Two designs have to be compared holistically as they look. So the test that they follow is the ordinary observer. If, if you were to look at these two containers, what would you feel about them? That's what the court said. And finally, an injunction was granted where Estrel was asked to stop selling their product in the container, which looks exactly of the containers of PD Light. One thing that I forgot to mention is PD Light's containers have design registration to them. Hence, they were able to stop Estrel. Importance of design registration. So with this, we are done with this introductory session to design registration. In the next set of video, we will talk about who can file the design registration, what are the requirements for design registrations, and what all details go in form one as you file design registration. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.